Hi everybody, how you doing? This is Arlene coming at you with messages of the heart. I'm sorry I've been gone for a few minutes. My internet was down. But we are on letter D. And of course, for me, D is all about drugs. I mean, there's other topics that I could talk about, but maybe that's somewhere in the future. But for right now, I'm going to be talking about drugs. And excuse the music behind me, but I love that song because it reminds me of a person who's on drugs or who's been abused or everything like that because sometimes people think that they really, really uh, are in the situation that they're in because they don't have no other choice. But uh, that's not so, you know. And so I just want to take a few minutes to um, tell you about some things that I know and um, about what happened to me on drugs. For me, it was all about trying to fit in. You know, get in where you fit in. I seen a lot of it when I was coming up, but um, it was not really forced on me. It was a choice that I made. I'm the type of person that believes in that whatever you do, it's your own choices. Now, there are some people who are bullied into uh, doing things because they are so fearful that they don't have that little um, earth in them to make them fight back. But for the most part, uh, part for most of the time, it's about choices that we do, and I chose to actually, you know, do drugs, you know. When I was coming up, it wasn't um, so readily available like it is today. When I was coming up, it was alcohol, it was cigarettes, and it was pills, you know, like second arms, bennies, which was a speed, and black, we call them black beauties, and different things like that, quaaludes. And uh, later, you know, Vicodins wasn't as popular, you know, at least not in my circle. And uh, all these other so-called good drugs that's going around right now, you know, ecstasy and all like that. Back then, it was just pure acid, you know, it wasn't no ecstasy, it wasn't no ice, wasn't no crack, you know, at least not in the circle. Or like, like I say, available like it is right now. When I was uh, coming up, I was exposed to uh, alcohol, drugs, and everything like that. But, um, like I said, I didn't have to choose it. I chose it because I wanted to experiment. I wanted to be cool. I wanted to fit in. So, believe it or not, at the age of like nine years old, I really started smoking cigarettes, Marlboros, which is supposed to be one of the baddest brands around uh, for uh, cancer. But, um, and I was doing Red Devils, uh, second alls, um, and I was drinking, it was, you know, and um, uh, there were other reasons later on why I continued to do so, because uh, at first it was to fit in, but then I got abused, and I was going through a lot of peer pressure, and then I used drugs to, um, to, uh, suppress the pain and you know the less than feeling that I was feeling at the time the guilt and the shame and all like that so it became a natural part of my life but even in doing so I always had something in the back of my head that was telling me it wasn't the right thing to do but I chose not to listen to that part of my brain telling me and so you know it really affected my life in a long in a long way um, I started going to jail, I started having D DUIs, you know, or having wrecks, you know, starting fights, getting in the fights, you know, getting jumped on, uh, just being just verbally abusive to other people and, and vice versa, and it just became the life, it just became the life for me, you know, it was interesting, it was fun, it was chaotic, and you know, it was a learning experience, but nobody should have to go through life learning on that level. And as I got older, I stayed in school, though. I did stay in school um, because there was a part of me, like I said, that knew better. There was a part of me that wanted to succeed, but there was also a part of me that just wanted to be around where there was always fun. And um, I just had an outgoing personality. So uh, until I was able to learn how to channel that personality into a direction where I did not have to drink, I did not have to do drugs, I didn't have to do all that to fit in, you know. 
I did not have to be a follower, you know, I could be a leader. I could place myself in a position where I needed to be a leader instead of a follower. So all through my high school, um, it's almost a blur because, you know, everything I did, I did loaded. You know, I drove, I skated, I danced, I talked, you know, did other things, you know, you know, yeah, those did those things like that under the influence as well because I thought, you know, oh, it made it better, but, you know, that was a psychological trip too. But then as I grew older, like I said, I went in and out of the penitentiary and uh, it was all drug related. And finally, I came up on eight years clean and sober. And after those eight years clean and sober, I learned a lot about AA, NACA, your way, my way, God's way, anybody's way. But I was at that point trying to do whatever I could to maintain a stable life and to share with others that there's more to life than just doing drugs, you know. I know there comes a time when everybody wants to experiment. Everybody wants to live their own life, you know. It's, it's the, like the song say, you know, it's your thing, do what you want to do. But really, it's not just your thing. It's God's thing, then it's your thing, and then it's the thing of other people around you. What you do affects your family, your friends, your, your church, or your job, everything. It, it's a whole big old cycle. So you don't want to get caught up in thinking that what you do is just your life. That's not true. And also, what I wanted to say is that there's a couple of things that's in NA, AA, and CA that they, the terms that they use, that's really spiritual based. You know, like staying away from people, places, and things. Right now, um, if I wanted to break it all down biblically, I could do that. But just for the sake of time and posting, I'm just going to let you know that a lot of the CA, NA, and AA uh, uh, principles and and steps are spiritually based that's why it works but for some people they don't use the term God so they had to make it in a way where everybody can get a fulfillment out of it but I'm telling you from my experience that no matter what you do if you don't have God in your life saying that you have God in your life then you know you're still gonna be missing something because unless we confess Christ as our personal Savior you know we're never gonna be fully um, stable in our lives that's the best way I can put it right now because God said that we should confess him before man and he'll confess us before his father you know so a lot of people in these different groups were telling me that you know it's okay to believe in God but you have to really believe in, in AA well it didn't work for me I know that it does work for some but it didn't work for me I needed something more and that more was Jesus Christ so I re-accepted Christ as my personal Savior, decided to live my whole life for Him and not against Him so that my life could be better. But with you, when you with people, places, and things, people, places, and things, you can't say that enough, people, places, and things will break you down. I'm telling you, people, places, and things will break you down. You have to be conscious of the people that surround you, the things you do, and places that you go. Because I'm telling you, it's just not something that you want to ignore. And another thing that they talk about is one day at a time. One day at a time is something that you just have to instill in your life. You can't get overwhelmed with different decisions, with different directions, different goals and all like that. You have to take each step one day at a time, one step at a time, one moment at a time. Because if you try to get everything in, in one big old ball, you become discombobulated and it stresses you out until you start seek, seeking for other avenues. And a lot of times that's drugs and alcohol. We don't just, when we go through a crisis, the majority of us who are not, you know, church-based or God-based, when we have a crisis, we reach out for drugs, alcohol, sex, or something other than Jesus Christ. So people, places, and things is very important in your life and how you um, uh, go about your daily life. Now, there are some drugs that are around right now where the young kids are using them. And um, I've had experience with them myself, so I know what I'm talking about. But like I said, for the sake of time, I'm just trying to let you know that drugs do kill, they do destroy, they do steal your life. 
So what did that sound like? Hello? The enemy. Yeah, he comes to steal, kill, and destroy. And he uses drugs to do that. He uses people to do that. He uses places to do that. And he uses things. And those things are drugs. Drugs are not good for you. Drugs, the name drug goes way back. They say Shakespeare came up with that, you know, coined that phrase. And it's documented. You know, you can Google it. And then it said drugs come from the Dutch word, which, which means drugs, you know, D-R-O-O-G-S. And then, you know, uh, nobody really know where drugs come from, the word drugs. But um, the real name for, you know, is like pharmaceutical, medicines, or whatever. There's good drugs, there's bad drugs. But in all reality, no drugs are good for you because God did not intend for us to be on drugs. No medication. He didn't intend for us to have vitamins for pain. He didn't intend for us to have so much for sleeping aids. He didn't intend for us to have ecstasy or cocaine for sex enhancements. He intended us to have good, a good natural um, diet of fruits, herbs, nuts, grains, you know, and that would take care of everything. And basically, if you go back to the Bible, God gave us a preventive formula not to be sick and uh, have all these pains. You know, but after sin came in the world, that's when the pain came. But still, we still can get control of our lives with uh, a good daily diet of fruits, herbs, vegetables, grains, nuts. You know, I know there's a lot of people out there that eat meat and everything like that, but you need to research that some more too. I'm just starting myself, you know, because um, I was still taking pain pills and sleeping aids, you know, trying to do everything because I got a lot going on in this head of mine. So, you know, but even I am making a stand today saying that, you know, I'm just through with drugs, not only just um, using, you know, I've been clean for a while now, and I don't have eight years under my belt like I once did, but I have a few years under my belt and um, I'm through with the pain pills and everything, I'm changing my diet changing my outlook on life and doing everything I can to stay away from drugs. And I hope you do the same thing. And I thank you for listening to me today. I know I'm going fast, but I just want to hurry up before the telephone ring or somebody call me. And I know this is long overdue. And if you have any more questions, please feel free to hit me up on Facebook under Arlene Wilhite Williams or hit me up on this YouTube channel right now. All right. Peace out to you. Stay black. All right. Well, not stay black, but you know what I mean. Stay up. All right, then. Peace out.